Hey everyone, I wanted to talk to you um, a little bit here. Uh, where do I start? Wow. You know, when I first came to this community, I'm a survivor of sexual abuse, childhood sexual abuse. Very violent abuse on top of that. And I'm LGBT. I'm a trans man. So um, with that being said, when I first came into the Extra Always Witness community and into activism, I was bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, new person. I had high hopes. Um, I saw people like um, folks from the vast apostate army. I saw all kinds of people, Barbara Anderson and you know all kinds of names out there propaganda techniques i'm going way back now um all kinds of people and it seemed like everybody was cool right i mean there was of course trolls here and there but the prominent xjw's and activists i had a lot of respect for like joel martz jw fairy tale back then i used to love all of his videos I, I think I watched his videos for like a whole year straight, you know, because he did make me think. Uh, Faithful Slave, I never did watch a whole lot of his stuff, but, you know, I thought he was cool. Uh, JW Prime Time, I never really knew much about other than one of his memorial crashes, which I thought was cool. And, um, excuse me, um, The Great Apostate Neo, I didn't really know much about him I don't think he was back then and I don't know when he came on the scene but I didn't know much about him but you know I thought he was alright I mean I assumed anybody that was in the vast apostate army would be cool and alright right uh let's see who else I mean there was so many other people but as time passed I started to notice things and see things and experience things and recently, this thing with the rape jokes. As a survivor of sexual abuse, I, I just can't find that funny. I don't care what context it is. I just don't. But that's just me, because there are people that are survivors of sexual abuse that can find that funny, or at least tolerate it. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, whatever context. And um, I've really thought about this for a while. The ex Jehovah's Witness communities, there's more than one community. It's not just one community, but especially with the activist communities within the Jehovah's ex Jehovah's Witness, there seems to be a high tolerance for inappropriate behavior. And I just can't, uh, I just don't want to deal with people that have loose boundaries like that. Now, some people say, well, you know, it's just rape jokes, it's not a big deal. But then these people have a problem with my roast, my roast jokes. And, you know, the roasts can get pretty, pretty harsh. They can get pretty ruthless. Cat Williams, speaking of roasts, right now in the comedy industry and in the entertainment world, Cat Williams uh, roasted another comedian, Wanda, on, on a radio show that was being set up for a performance at one of the Atlanta comedy clubs. And Wanda was going to be performing there and some other people that Cat Williams was good friends with. So he was going to go to the club and support his, his uh, friends. Well, anyway, during this radio broadcast, Cat Williams roasted Wanda. And it was something petty like she said that she likes to cook broccoli for her family. And he started saying, how do you cook broccoli? Do you really even cook that? And. 
you know, all this, all you have to do is boil water, and he was just, you know, doing his thing, but it turned into her husband pulling a gun, allegedly, on Cat Williams for roasting Wanda, for roasting his wife, Wanda, who was a comedian. So, having said that, I know that I could be a lot more finessed with my presentation. I'm not polished like uh, somebody like XJW Critical Thinker, where I'm wearing a suit and tie and I'm well behaved at all times and I watch what I say and everything is, you know, it's a certain way, Th which is fine. I have no problem with that because it has its place. But I also think more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, more raw types of expression are also necessary. A good case and example is the JW fairy tale channel. You know, he wears uh, face paint and he screams like a maniac. Matter of fact, the first video I ever saw of him was a recommendation from somebody on a Facebook thread saying it was Dan Mayer Dinglebun. She said, You all has got you all have to see JW Fairy Tales channel. It is epic. So I got curious about the name and I liked um Dan Mara. I liked a lot of her videos. So I went to check them out and the first video I clicked was JW Fairy Tale just screaming like a maniac. And I said, I got to keep watching this guy because he's not scripted. He's not sitting there trying to present a polished uh, image. He is raw, and that is how he is. He's coming from, you know, what I thought was very authentic, okay? Which I'm not saying that people who are polished and are not authentic, okay? But what I'm saying is I also value just straight-up YouTubers that – don't try to um, come across as polished, all right? Uh, so, um, you know, I'm no angel when it comes to roasting. I have a good friend that says that I am like a bull in a china shop, and that's probably a very accurate description when it comes to my communication. And, of course, you know, I could always improve my communication like anyone else, right? So, uh, there's that, but, um, I've been getting a, a lot of, uh, support here from people, you know, um, and I want to thank you, you know who you are, I want to let you know it's never expected, I've been on my path solo for most of my life, excuse me, excuse me. And like many of you, I didn't have family to support me. I had family that shunned me, you know. So I'm not I'm not looking for anybody to jump on the bandwagon with me. But I do appreciate all of you, all of these people that have shown support. And many people aren't necessarily putting it out there. They're not making videos or comments. But they are messaging me on private. They are texting me. They're calling me. So I really am surprised at how many people are saying, hey, you know, you're right. Um, I felt this way for so long. I just didn't know how to say it to anyone. And, um, you know, I do appreciate that. But always know it's not something that is expected. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, um about being doxxed, you know, you know, people dox, you know, go to Lexus Nexus now that you have my name. Um go to Lexus Nexus, look me up, do a background check. It'll be $175, but this is going to be a very thorough one, okay? And um you're gonna find out what has already been out there, not what I'm doxxed on, but you know, I encourage anybody to do background checks on people in the community here. I really do. And um, what else? Um, I think that's it, right? Let me see. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this morning, 
or was it last night a couple of people sent me some links to two videos called testimony one and testimony two and um they told me that i am being blamed for these videos that i was allegedly the one to record the person speaking on these videos um believe me if i had knowledge of what was in those videos because it seems like this has been kept under wraps for a whole year if I had known about what's in that testimony video believe me I would have put it on my channel long ago but um, nonetheless Apostle Smurf girl I believe that's her voice on the video she's talking and um, wow she has really really said some shocking stuff and even though I called you out about the uh, channeling thing I, I didn't I had a hard time believing you actually but even though um, I didn't quite believe you on that I tend to think that you might be telling the truth on those two videos but you know I don't have any proof you're the person who has the proof but I do feel for you I feel very bad for you if that is true what you say and I tend to believe you please stay safe you know please stay safe and do what you need to do to protect yourself um, I, I thought you know I thought the rape jokes and the rape memes were were pretty bad but if what is said on those two videos is true, oh, I'm nauseous. I am disgusted and nauseous, and I'm so turned off. I'm so turned off by any kind of XJW activism groups, period. Group or people or forums or whatever. And this is... um. You can Google these videos. You can look them up. I'm not going to mirror them because, like I said earlier, I'm going to be a little bit more selective with my time and attention uh, with XJW-related stuff. I really am. I'm going to be a lot more selective with how much time and energy and attention I spend on this channel anymore or in in general you know um, and I'm not saying I'm going away or anything by no means but I think it's time for me to reevaluate again how much time I do spend and who I associate with because with people having such a high tolerance for inappropriate behavior along with people being cut off from their feelings I mean I've had people tell me that they're so cut off from their feelings they can't feel anything so that's not really healthy not being in touch with your feelings can be quite problematic and we're all at a different path you know we're all on a different road and I'm not perfect by no means I have many many things that I need to work on and improve on just like anybody else but um, I do work on being in touch with my feelings. That is one thing that I have learned personally. If you try to block out your feelings, you try to snuff it out, it's going to come back with a vengeance. And you're going to be out of control with it. So that's, that's my path to, to face my feelings, to face fears head on. You know, kind of like the bull in the china shop. I, I am... A bull in a china shop with myself in that respect a lot of times too so um, having said that I want people to stay safe um, don't hurt yourself and if you are being hurt you need to get help you need to go to the authorities because 
no one deserves to be sexually assaulted no one deserves to be uh sexually abused okay no one deserves that and um these testimony videos okay i have to say this because i wasn't there they are allegations they are allegations i tend to believe smurf girl i do but i also have to say that they are allegations and i have no proof whatsoever other than the same thing as you as as just listening to these things and hearing it but this was my first time ever hearing these two videos i knew that there was talk but the details revealed in these two videos testimony one and testimony two excuse me uh i'm shocked i am just shocked uh, that all of this stuff allegedly went on while they were protesting in Warwick. I, I'm just... Uh, 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 if it's true... Oh, man. it's it's. I'm disgusted. I'm so turned off, disappointed, sad, and disgusted. And I don't think Smurf Girl would lie. I don't think she would just lie and make up things like that. But I think, um, Smurf Girl, you have, if I'm not mistaken, you've put me in this and said that I was the one to record you. Um, I have no need to record you. As a matter of fact, I live in a two-party consent state, which means that if I record somebody without consent, I'm going to a federal prison. So I think, uh... You may have had me mistaken with someone else, but if you did want to put me in it just because you have a bone to pick with me about not believing you about the channeling, the uh, Watchtower channeling thing or whatever, okay, I mean, you know, it's no skin off my back if people believe that I recorded you or believe that I didn't record you or whatever. I don't really see why you know, what the goal of that was, or maybe you made a mistake or whatever, but I will tell you this, community, if I had known about those videos, if I had known, if she had really told me, I would have already been made videos to let people know, because if there's one thing you know about this channel, I'm not afraid to put the stuff out there. I'm not afraid to put the stuff out there, you know, because I don't care about losing subscribers. I don't care about losing quote unquote friends or acquaintances. Matter of fact, even though the social media, when you connect with someone, it says friend, that person is not necessarily a friend. I view people as acquaintances more so than his friends. I have very few people that I actually call real friends. The majority of people, and that doesn't mean I don't love you, okay? You know, I love acquaintances too, but a friend is a whole other level than acquaintance. And most people online have never ever been able to go to the friend level with me because First of all, it has to be beyond the computer. It has to be a real life thing. Okay. And, you know, people can be cool and they can smile and they can chit chat and you can have a lot of fun with them. But a friend is a whole other level. That's somebody that will go out to bat for you. You know what I mean? Especially when it's not easy. And. A friend is somebody who can, um, who's there for you, and vice versa, that you're there for them. And acquaintances can be there, too, to an extent, right? But we all have different varying degrees of it. So there's that, folks. I don't know what else to say. I'm really disturbed by these Testimony 1 and Testimony 2 videos. Um, I, I had no idea that all of this stuff was going on but um 
stay safe out there people stay safe and um, I think I'm going to um, call this video make this video end it now but I just want to let folks know I um, I'm also disappointed I I, uh, I thought highly of a lot of people I really did I really did and I want to make sure to put this out there that within all of it the vast apostate army folks have done a lot of good okay they have they were able to latch on to w5 to the media and promote you know an exposed watchtower to to an extent with the w5 um, broadcast through uh, Trisha Frangina she's um, she got a lot of media attention through the lawsuit, so it was, um, you know, this is business. I don't have a problem with that. That's advertising. That's business um, affiliate joint ventures, affiliate relationships. You know, excuse me, you have it all the time. Excuse me, you have businesses that latch on to another business that has some media attention, and they ride off the coattails of that one. So I don't have a problem with that, and I think that's uh, just how it is in business and in group alliances and things like that but um, uh, the allegations that were stated on the testimony one and testimony two videos along with the rape jokes and the rape memes and the high tolerance for for these things in the ex Jehovah's Witness community it's um, it's really turned me off it's really really turned me off and um, I'm going to be a lot more selective with my time, energy, and attention with uh, this channel as well as also with people, with XJW related matters. And um, I just hope, I really do hope that um, if you're being sexually assaulted, that you have the courage to go to the police. If you're being harassed, if your life is being threatened, or the life of your family members is being threatened, I invite you to please go to the police. Go do what you have to do to protect yourself. Okay? So, uh, I think that's about it. Wow. I'm really sad. I mean, I just, I'm shocked, but I'm not shocked. And I feel really, really bad for Smurf Girl. You know, when all is said and done, you know, and I've called her a bullshitter, and and I, I called her all kinds of things because of this channeling thing she she claimed to have. But setting that aside, I I do tend to believe what she says in these videos, and I do feel bad for you. I hope you do get some kind of resolution on it. You know, I'm I'm sad that that happened to you. All right, everybody. Um, stay safe. Have a good Friday. I know for some people it's already Saturday, so enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you when I see you.